hello students so today we will continue with our topic of electricity before i start today's topic i would like to explain you two terms short circuit and overloading of circuits overloading as the word suggest means the load is more in case of now when does the load will be become more load will become more by three conditions first in case in the same circuit in the same ring circuit or in the same socket you are connecting many appliances like what people do in the same socket they say multi unit sockets they will insert a plug which is having multi unit so they will connect few things to the same socket or uh, extension boards are coming and then they will connect few appliances in the same extension board so the current in that wiring which is bringing current to that extension board may get overloaded so this is second overloading can happen in case the there is a hike in power supply due to certain problem in the distribution system so and third overloading can take place in case you are installed an equipment which is drawing high current so in so for any reason in case it becomes overloaded the fuse of that circuit will blow off now short circuit means live and neutral are touching one another not in the outside or in the appliance like suppose this is an appliance this is certain appliance this is having a live wire and some neutral wire is coming out now both these wires are inside the appliance now due to certain problem in case some rubber coating has given way and both these wires are touching one another so then the current will directly will not flow through the appliance will flow through these wires for so live wire and neutral wire current always flows in from the least resistance path so in case live and neutral wire are touching one another inside the appliance or outside the appliance the as the word say short circuit means the circuit will become shorter the current will not flow through a longer path of the appliance will directly flow from live wire and neutral wire in case they are running also and they are touching one another because this wires are always near to one another rubber insulation has melted due to over current or due to aging effect with aging effect also the rubber gets cracked and with time it may become naked so when the live and neutral wire touch one another the high heavy current will draw and lot fuse will blow off now you might have heard that various accidents have taken place due to the short circuits it means the fuse rating was not proper so the heavy current was flowing for a longer period of time and any combustible material which was kept near that has started burning and it has caused a fire so this is short circuit as the word suggests the current is taking a shorter path so after periodically after you can say 15 or 20 years you should ins- get the wires inspected that rubber coating is okay and it has not cracked and install fuses of proper rating someone there is a tendency among people are for this room the fuse blows very often so instead of having 5 ampere fuse are you put 10 ampere fuse there so now the wiring or appliances they must uh, they might have been designed for 5 ampere and now if 10 ampere current flows it it will get overheated and the short circuits may take place so this you should learn short circuit is due to 
live and neutral wire touching one another outside or inside the appliance. Okay. So now we'll go to today's topic of electrical energy and power. We have learnt these terms previously that energy is measured in which unit? Energy is measured in unit of work that is joule and power is measured joule per second which we call watt. Now you consider a circuit in which there is a current I. So these are the symbols you know. Current is I. It's flowing through a resistor R. So resistor, re resistance is R. So this is my resistance R. Now this is having a current I. Now potential difference across this end is V. Potential difference across this end is V. So for how long I am flowing the current? I am flowing current for time T. If the current has flown for time T, then I know my Q is equal to I into T. Because current is rate of flow of charge. So Q is I into T. So my charge Q has flown in the conductor. So these are the symbols that we will be using. V is potential difference across the conductor. R is its resistance. Q is the charge. Time is the uh, T is the time for which the charge has flown. Is it all right? Just learn the symbols. Then we we'll, we have learned potential difference V. What is potential difference V? Work done by moving charge Q. So we'll divide by Q. It is work done per unit charge. So V is W into Q. So work done in moving charge Q is V into Q. So now in this conductor, I have moved a, moved a charge Q. Potential difference is V. So my work done is V into Q. So, so my work done is equal to V into Q. Now this work has been done in how much time? In time T. So work, if I divide both the side by T, work done upon T is equal to VQ upon T. Okay. Is equal to VQ upon T. Now what is work done per unit time? Now work done per unit time. You know what is work done per unit time? Work done per unit time is power. So work done per unit time. So power is equal to VQ upon T. Now what is Q upon T? It is flow of charge flowing per second. So that is I. Therefore my work done is equal. My power work done per unit time is power. So W upon T is equal to power is equal to V into I. So this is very important relation that power flowing in the circuit is given by V into I. That's what I've written here. Power is equal to V into I. Power is equal to V into I. This power is in watts. Now if this is in watts, if I want energy, so energy would be V I T joule. So energy flowing is V I T joule or you learn one thing, energy you know is power into time. So so power is V into I. So energy supplied in time T is P into T or V I T. So this is the first formula you should learn that power is equal to V I. Power is equal to V I. And energy work, uh, work done energy is power upon power into T work done is power into T because power is work done per unit time. Is it all right? Now we will come to, this is the scientific unit of power energy. Now we will come to commercial unit of energy. So before that I will, what is one watt hour? One watt hour means one watt multiplied by one hour. One watt hour means one watt of power we are using for one hour. So one watt, so how much uh, that value will come? One watt hour is one joule per second. And so I am getting an energy of one joule per second, one watt, and one hour is 3600 second. So I will get 3600 joule. One watt means I am using energy at the rate of one joule per second. I, so in 3600 seconds, I have used 3600 joule. 
So this you should learn. One watt hour is 3,600 joule. Now if somebody says one kilowatt hour, kilo means multiplied by thousand. So 3,600 multiplied by thousand, so we'll get 3.6 into 10 raised to 6 joule. So one kilowatt hour is 3.6 into 10 raised to 6 joule, which I can also write as 3.6 megajoule. Okay, so this is very, now one kilowatt hour is stored in abbreviation only one unit. So when, when they say that a light of 400 units have come, means 400, scientifically 400 kilowatt hour. But instead of telling this long word, in rural areas, people who are not educated, so they find it very easy to 400 units. How much bill I have? 300 units. Okay? So this is about the commercial unit. Now we will come to scientific units again. I know V is equal to IR Ohm's law. V is equal to IR is Ohm's law. Now you put this Ohm's law in this equation. Energy supplied is VIT. So in place of V, you write IR. So I'll get I square RT. So I can also say that energy supply is I square RT instead of VIT. Or in place of I, you write in terms of V. I would be equal to V upon R. So I will get V square upon RT. So energy supplied can be written in three ways. Either I can say energy supplied is VIT or I can say I square RT or I can say V square upon RT. So these are the three formulas for energy. Energy is equal to VIT, you use Ohm's law and you will get the three answers. So this will be V square upon R into T or I can say I square RT or I can say I square RT okay so this and now if you remove T if you divide by T we will get power so power can also be written in this system power is I square R or V, v square upon R or VI so you learn this I, I would suggest you to learn only this and then Energy you can get by multiplying by T. So what we learn? Power is equal to VI as I have written here. And by using Ohm's law, you will get V square upon R or I square R. And energy multiplied by T. Okay? Now, how do you calculate a numerical energy in kilowatt hour? When it says kilowatt hour, so means we have to multiply by watt into hours divided by K means 1000. Then we get kilowatt hour. So we will calculate power in watts. How to calculate power in watt? V into I. And time should be in hour. For, for how many hours we have used? Not days, neither minutes or seconds. Divide by thousand, I will get energy in kilowatt hour or energy in units. Okay? Now one more important term we have to learn is power rating of an equipment is given. If you go to any shop, he will say by iska power rating hai 200 watts at 220 volt. He will say for example I have given 200 watts at 220 volt. Now what does it mean 200 watts at 220 volt? It means in case you are connecting to, to 220 volt then it will draw a power of 200 watts. So you being a sci scientific person you will think are how much is resistance, how much is this resistance, how much is this current. So what you will do, you will use Ohm's law and we can get all the answers. Okay? So because what is what is power is V into I. So 200 V so V into I is 200. Power is equal to V I. Isn't it? Power is equal to V I. Now V is how much? 220. This is 200. So I will get the answer. So I would be equal to so I, from, from this I can get the answers. I square R. So if you want R, R would be equal to P upon I square. Okay. If you want to calculate R, you will get P upon I square. Or 
so by using ohm's law we can get the value of resistance as well as current okay c power is vi no no do no power he has given he has given i so he has given so i can calculate i so my current will be p upon v current will be p upon v and my power is v square upon r so my r would be v square upon p so this you need not if, if you learn it's good if you don't learn you just know that i can calculate current and power using this formula and ohm's law power is vi which is equal to v square upon i which is i square r to get energy multiply by t to get r and i use use this equations you will get the answer okay so we'll go to we'll proceed further to heating effect of electric current you know whenever current flows it produces heat those things become hot like even in, in the tv those are not interested that it should become hot but the tv also becomes hot in case we want only heat energy from uh, electric uh, resistance then that is called heating effect of electric current now this heating effect of electric current we are using in the electric heater in the electric iron and any in the, in in the uh, bulb filament bulb in the electric fuse there we, we want that heat should get produced and we can use it now how much does the heat get produced whatever energy we are supplying it is getting converted into heat just now we have learned energy we supply is vit or i square rt so this is the heat produced so heat produced is i square rt or vit okay so this is the heat energy produced now this is in joules but normally we find heat energy to be converted in calories so to multiply by 0.24 so heat energy heat energy produced is 0.24 i square rt calories this is called joules law of heating and now he has also written it in word heat energy produced in a resistor is directly proportional to square of the current i square directly proportional to the resistance directly proportional to the time okay now let us see the applications of the heating of electric current as i told you it is being used in electric iron room heater toaster electric kettle so there we are using nichrom wire we are using nichrom wire so that when is this wire becomes hot at about 900 degrees celsius even then it will not get oxidized and its life would be is reasonably good okay now the or for the all the appliances you are having some electric uh, wire that wire is made up of copper they are called connecting wires from the plug till the toaster you have got a connecting wire they are made up of copper so its specific resistance is quite low so it will not get much heated up but nichrome specific resistance is very high so it will get heated up okay similar similar is the case in electric fuse in electric fuse we design that what should be its area of cross section and length so that when current of the rating of the fuse suppose i say this fuse is of 5 ampere so when 5 ampere fuse is flowing through this uh, when 5 ampere current is flowing through the fuse then heat energy would be liberated to such an extent that it will break it will melt here and it will break and break the circuit so current will stop flowing so it will save our appliances and wiring from damage due to over current is it all right
so that is the function of electric fuse so electric fuse are made up of low melting point alloys and they are designed of the thickness so that whatever is the power uh, current rating it will blow at that rating so they have got fuse of 1 ampere 2 ampere 5 ampere 10 ampere and many of now in electric bulb we are using tungsten metal why we are using tungsten metal because we are interested in light from this bulb so that it will give light we have to heat tungsten to a temperature more than 2500 degrees celsius so now tungsten is having a melting point of 3380 degrees celsius and it, it it has got high flexibility it does there no evaporation of it even at high temperature otherwise some metals may evaporate they will become more thin then they will melt and it will give way it they will break not to prevent oxidation of tungsten metal at this high temperature of 2500 we fill it with argon and nitrogen with our inert gases okay now that we don't use much filament bulb because besides giving light it is taking good amount of energy in for it to become hot so that heat energy we are wasting so now we are using uh, you can say even a tube lights and a led lights which does not require much heating they don't work on this heating principle is it all right so th this completes theory of this chapter i will require one more session to do numericals on this heating effect and electrical energy and power then this chapter will get over i hope you have enjoyed this chapter if you have not subscribed you can subscribe to the channel if you have felt uh, that you have gained good amount of knowledge you can like the channel and press the bell icon so that you will get notification when i post the next channel thank you